thank you guys so much for being here. So this is going to be an, like 101 intuition, how to grow your gifts, really what intuition is compared to what your ego is and how to ground, how to protect your energy and how to raise your vibration and why it's so important. So this is a very, very basic course before we get to the other more intense, more fun things. Okay. So I got a download earlier that I'm loading up. There we go. So a lot of people ask, what's the difference between intuition and your ego? So the really basic way that this was shared to me was your ego is that voice in your head that tells you that you're not going to accomplish your goal or that you can't do something or that has fear or doubt. So if you're going to go buy grapes, for example, and you're, you hear that voice go, well, maybe you shouldn't get that. That's not your intuition. Your intuition is the one that's telling you go left instead of going right. And there really is no logical reason why you just follow it. So that is a very basic understanding of intuition versus ego. So a lot of, yeah, a lot of really easy ways to tell if you're in the flow or if you're listening to intuition is seeing synchronicities. Synchronicities can look like um, repetitive numbers. They can look like you are going to call someone and then they call you or vice versa. Um, what else? It can look like a lot of different random, completely coincidental things that are not coincidental. Mainly you're thinking of something and then it happens. That's the big thing with um, synchronicities. It's your guides letting you know that you're not alone and that there's somebody here with you helping you, guide you, do all of those things. Okay, so let's talk about raising your vibration and how important that is and why. Is it possible to have intuition very, very strongly and work with intuition and have a lower vibration? Absolutely. But is it easier if you have a higher vibration? Yes. So some of the basic ways that I like to raise my vibe is uh, dancing, singing, laughing. Anytime I do anything um, intuitive related, giving readings, channeling, this, anything like this, I raise my vibration beforehand. It's super, super important. So typically people will ask me, is it okay if I play with my pets or hug my kids or things like that? And typically I tell them no for just general. There are some people that it works really well, but the reason I say no are because people and animals have their own energy field and you don't wanna mix up your energy field with their energy field. Does that make sense to everybody? Can I see you shake your heads or no? Good, okay. Um, so the other thing you wanna do is really allow yourself to be open. So when you work with um, non-physical beings, you want to set boundaries and set your opening sign up. So what I mean by this is after you have raised your vibration, you want some kind of visualization you do that allows yourself to open up and close down. And these are like, if you think of business hours, these are the same thing. Otherwise, you're going to have random non-physical entities coming into your awareness all the time because they don't know where the boundary line is. You need to make that really clear. Does that make sense? So one of the ways I like to do this is I'll raise my vibration and then I'll sit quietly and I'll go through each chakra, just the main seven, and imagine it opening up. And then I imagine a light going up and down my body. And that means I'm open for business. So then you receive information. To close down, it would be the same way. You would imagine the light. I imagine it from the top and the bottom coming back in. 
and all the chakras shutting down or turning off like light switches. And then you wanna go into your protective bubble. So let's talk about that. So there are a few basic ways to protect your energy. I don't like to go over fear a lot. So I just teach you very basic skills to protect your energy. And then if anything out of the ordinary comes up, we can talk about it together. So um, also I wanna share, cause I feel like I'm called to share this. The more awareness you have to lower density frequencies, the more it's gonna come into your aware, awareness. I've had students that have told me, well, what about this? And it's like a really scary energy. The more attention they pay to it, the more you're gonna receive it. So send it light, send it love, protect yourself and move on. So how you protect your energy is you want to imagine yourself in a bubble, in an eggshell, in a clamshell. The main thing is that it's circular. There are no edges because the energy stagnates if it's a square or a triangle. It'll stagnate on the, on the edges. So you want it to be a circle and you want your whole physical body to encompass inside the circle. Now in the bubble, it can be whatever you want it to be. It could be like butterflies and rainbows or I don't care what it is, it really doesn't matter. But nothing can hurt you inside of this bubble and you can't go outside of the bubble. It can be as close to you as you want it to be or as far away, depending upon things. So this is really good for empaths because now you're differentiating your energy from other people. This is really good for psychic protection. And this is really good for if you get scared from non-physical beings to protect yourself from them, okay? Um, there are three layers to this. So the first layer is your basic happy bubble. The second layer is when you have a shield. So when I envision a shield, I envision um, like a two-way mirror. And so this is really good for like psychic protection. So other people can't read you or any kind of um, energy vampires. Most of the times they're unfamiliar with what they're doing. They just know that they like your energy. And so they want to be by you more often, right? So if you feel really drained around one particular person, they might be an energy vampire and they might not even be aware of it. So what you want to do is envision that you are staring at them, but they are staring back at themselves. So they will treat you the way they treat themselves. Typically, it is for the best. Now, how to really help yourself with this is to do this so often that you can stare at someone with your eyes open and you're still doing it. Does that make sense to everybody? So you don't look like in the middle of a crowd, you're just standing there like trying to meditate. That's weird. So the third layer is getting to know your guides. So you have your protector guide. That is a specific guide in your spirit team that will help you in times of um, fear in times that maybe you're in a place you shouldn't be, you want to get out of it. And I could tell you a hundred stories about how my protector guide has helped me. My protector guide is Archangel Michael. And so if I'm in a situation that I want to be pulled out of very quickly, I will see his red cape go around me like that. And I'm, I'll be pulled out of the situation. So getting to know your protector guide is very important. And you can do that a variety of ways. There are a lot of YouTube videos that go over that. Okay, we're gonna talk about grounding and then we're gonna do questions. So grounding is really important, especially when you work with energy. I do no more than three readings a day because um, I wanna have a life, one but also because um, I don't want my physical body to be affected. So if you do a lot of energy work, whether it's Reiki, intuitive work, or you're in some type of job, like the medical field is very energetically charged right now. So if you do a lot of those things, 
then I recommend grounding your energy very, very frequently. How to do this. First, obviously, go out into earth, put your bare feet in the ground, ground your energy. Second level of that would be once you're outside with your feet in the earth, you can imagine your feet becoming roots and pulling down into the earth. I like to imagine also all of the excess energy going down into the earth and releasing it into Gaia. And then I ask her if I can have her energy that she no longer needs. So it's an exchange of energy. And that's a visualization. Another way to do this would be a salt bath. So you can, it can be as simple as putting your feet in a salt bath or you can get your whole body in there and make it a ritual, whatever makes you happy. Eating grounding foods will help as well, but this is all dependent upon how you're feeling physically and emotionally. So if you're feeling um, very drained when you feel like you shouldn't be, that's a really good indicator that you're ungrounded or that you have excess energy that doesn't belong to you and you need to get rid of it, okay? If you're feeling, it's another one. Emotionally charged out of nowhere. You're not technically triggered, but you're just very emotional. Right now, this is happening to a lot of us. Then getting rid of excess energy is going to benefit you as well because you're taking on more energy than you're probably aware of, especially right now. It's a collective thing. 